If you've been waiting for Star Citizen to finally pick up some steam and get something done, well, 2024 is gonna be that year. Already starting off in 2024's quarter one patch, 323, the next patch for the game, looks to be one of the biggest patches they've ever released for the game, at least in, since the 3.0 patch. We've got updates to the flight model, complete rework of it in fact, a new star map system, distribution centers, a new way of loading cargo, the inventory is getting completely reworked, updates to the economy, and a ton of other things that I'm sure you guys are not gonna wanna miss. So let's go straight into what we can expect to see in this next huge patch for the game. So what are those features? Well, the first one is an update to the EVA system. This is something we saw about, well, over a year ago now at the last last Citizen Con, where they talked about some updates to it based off of Squadron 42 that were gonna make its way eventually to Star Citizen. Well, it's happening now. Now, instead of flopping around when you try to go into a gravitational environment from zero G, there's gonna be a much smoother transition. And the way you fly is gonna be something more akin to like Iron Man or The Expanse if you've watched it. So a little bit more realistic and intuitive for when you're navigating tight spaces. So instead of moving your whole body to look around now, you're just moving your head until you get to a certain point where your body will start to shift in a much more believable way. It's gonna make the whole system work a lot better. Eventually, they're also going to be moving into, and this is beyond 323, uh, a new system which will have fuel for your EVA suits where you're gonna have to conserve and limit it and use your momentum in a sort of uncoupled mode like what we have for ships to navigate more smoothly. But that's gonna come with the push and pull feature which is gonna come in a later patch. That's the system where you can grapple onto things in a zero G environment. Next though, we're also getting an update to the interaction system in the game, something that's needed on overhaul for a long time. Now we're gonna have a new interaction wheel with things that we can interact with in the world, which is a lot easier to use, similar to the interaction wheel that we already have in the game, but a bit more polished and for everything. And the system is gonna do a lot better of a job recognizing what we're looking at so that we know what we can interact with. It all looks to be really polished from what we saw from some examples in the Inside Star Citizen video they posted this week. So I'm looking forward to this huge quality of life improvement. Next is the distribution center update. Now, this is a whole new location akin to the size of a landing zone. Not quite as big, but big nonetheless. These are industrial areas on the planet side of a bunch of planets around the Stanton system and future star systems as well, where manufacturing, shipping, supplies, and mining takes place. So various different types of activities will happen here, including weapons manufacturing. Now, to start off with, this is going to be tied heavily with the reputation system. You'll have to earn your way through an organization, an NPC organization that is, in order to get missions with them. And eventually you'll be able to make a lot of money and purchase very unique items because you know that company very well. But this will also have implications for combat, for defending missions against NPCs and AI, and a raid mission where you'll be tasked with going into said facility to pick out a very valuable item and escape with it while you fight your way through NPCs and potentially players. Unfortunately though, CIG didn't talk about any kind of missions being released with this initial update, so this omission kind of indicates to me that we might not see it with 323, but it's a bit early, so I'm going to reserve that prediction for a little bit later when we get closer to the release of the centers. It wouldn't be unprecedented though for them to release a new location without anything to do at it. The next thing is quite unexpected. Master Modes is also making its way into 323. If you don't know what this is, this is a complete rework of the flight model, which will now be separated into two flight modes. A SEM mode, which is for combat and for doing activities in ships like mining, and a navigation mode, which is the only mode you'll be able to travel fast in, above, say, 300 meters a second, up to 1.2 kilometers a second in space, and the only mode you'll be able to go into quantum with or use the short quantum jump feature, the quantum boost feature that they talked about at CitizenCon. Now for this initial release, it looks like they're going to try to get every single ship working with this new flight model. And this will include the precision targeting mode we saw, which is a zoomed in view at the ship you're targeting to allow you to more easily target systems and disable it so that you could perhaps board it or, or uh, relieve it of its cargo if you're a pirate. And we're also probably going to see some things change with the weapon spread, like what we saw talked about at Citizen Con, to encourage players to get a little bit closer with combat. Now, this system is going to make it much harder to disengage from combat. You're going to have to really commit if somebody starts shooting at you or weigh the 
problem of having to go into navigation mode and basically turning off your shields. This is the big issue with transitioning between these two modes because when you transition into navigation mode, you basically lose all your defensive capability and offensive capability. The only thing you have then is speed. We're also going to see a change to gimbals with this master mode update. Now all ships will have gimbals by default and those gimbals will be the same size as the weapon slot and the weapon itself. So instead of a size three slot having a size three gimbal with a size two weapon, it's gonna be size three weapon, size three gimbal, size three slot. A lot easier, a lot more straightforward, and gimbals now are basically just going to be the standard. And this makes a lot of sense. There was always a back and forth between fixed and gimbal, and they never really got that balance right. So I think just getting rid of it altogether makes a lot of sense. However, there will still be some fixed unique weapons like the size 10 on the Idris, the nose gun on the Vanguard, and the Ares, which is that big size seven a weapon on that ship from Crusader. So those will stay the same, but aside from those, every other ship is gonna get those new gimbal updates. But that's not all. Like I said, it's a big update. FPS weapons are also getting a bit of an update, specifically with the reloading functionality in the game. Right now, we don't have a way to repack mags, so if you don't empty a magazine when you've used it, you'll be left with it on your, you know, your weapons or your, your suit slot, and eventually you might reload to it and find that you only have like five rounds left in a mag. Now you're gonna be able to go into your inventory and repack your magazine so that every single magazine you have is condensed down to the maximum amount, making just combat a lot more simple. But that's not all. We're also getting a dynamic crosshair. They did indicate that it was going to indicate uh, the weapons spread, which again is a very standard feature of crosshairs. But we also are going to get the new scopes, which look a lot better based on what we saw at uh, the CitizenCon presentation. But they won't be picture in picture like games like Tarkov, at least just yet, because, well, the game doesn't run particularly well in picture in picture, well, it is kind of a drag on resources. HUD improvements will also be making their way into 3.23. By HUD improvements, I'm talking about the minimap. Yes, a 3D minimap will be in this patch, so you'll be able to more easily navigate spaces, including ships and landing zones. So initially for this release, they said that we're only gonna be focusing on trying to get all the ships and all the landing zones in. Later, they'll be doing more facilities, but this is something they need to mark up on an individual basis and will take a lot of time to fully integrate. They also talked about how the notification system is getting reworked. The UI for looting is gonna be added into this, this part of the update. And we're also getting a compass under HUD so that we can more easily navigate the surfaces of planets and moons. I mean, this is something we wanted forever. Now we'll be able to more easily navigate and communicate between different players. And they also pointed out during this segment that the armor that you wear is going to affect what UI elements you have available. Specifically for the combat elements, you'll have to be wearing combat gear in order to see the dynamic crosshair, which is interesting but I think that they probably need to tweak this a bit to give maybe some industrial suits some basic functionality for basic defense. I don't know, this is something they'll have to balance and I look forward to seeing how this actually works. This though leads into what you probably were expecting and hoping to see, the star map. Yes, if you've not played Star Citizen before, you won't know how important this is, but the star map has been the bane of my existence in trying to navigate the universe and finally, it's getting an update including some additional polish and functionality that we didn't see at CitizenCon, namely a search functionality which allows you to search for location and set it as a waypoint to navigate to, and this navigation will display on your HUD. This also includes the ability to set your own custom waypoints, but this will not be something that we'll be able to share with other players just yet, at least they didn't share that in this presentation, so I expect we won't see this in 323, at least just yet. Then the character customizer is also getting its update in 323, like what we saw at the Squadron 42 presentation. That means a lot more customization for the heads that we have, including a new sculpting tool, which allows us to more specifically change the way our character's face looks. Although they said it's still based on the DNA system. So don't expect to be able to create some crazy looking faces. Although I think you'll probably still be able to pull that off. We'll just have to see. I, hopefully we don't see like Atlas style faces. I don't know if you know what that is really weird character customizer in that game. Unfortunately, there was no mention of whether or not we were gonna get our beards and new hairstyles and hair coloring with this update, but we'll just have to wait and see what this actually includes. Then they talked about how freight elevators are finally making their way into 323. This is something that was supposed to be in initially with the cargo refactor last year, but got pushed back due to the complexity of this feature. And what this is, is basically a new big elevator that's in all hangars that you get, and hangars, by the way, will now be instanced, where you'll be able to pull up your physical inventory and load it onto your ship, including things like 
FPS armor, and vehicles, meaning you no longer have to fly to a ground location to load your vehicle and spend like 20, 30, or 40 minutes trying to do so. This is gonna make it a lot easier for us to be able to do events with vehicles in the future, and so I expect to see them a lot more often. Although, this does mean, according to them, that they're going to be removing the local inventory UI. Now, I'm not 100% on this, if this is a good idea, that is, because this is gonna make some things a bit more tedious. Certainly, the loading and unloading of certain smaller items is gonna be a lot more troublesome to do. Now, you're gonna have to go to a kiosk in your hangar to load and unload items, even as small as extra ammo, potentially. So we're gonna have to see how this actually works. Missions 2 will have an update in 3.23, namely we're going to be getting a big update to the Xenothreat mission, which is one of my favorite missions actually, it has a great balance between combat and non-combat activities, and we're going to be getting a big new addition that happens before Xenothreat, which they gave no details about. All I can say though is that this is, like I said, one of the better events that they have, much better than Siege of Orison in terms of polish and balance, so I look forward to seeing how they're iterating on this this year. Then they talked about Blockade Runner, which is a rework of the kind of, well, failed uh, Ninetales lockdown that we used to have. This is supposed to work a lot better now of trying to run through a station's defenses as uh, I think is a good player against pirates, but we'll have to see how this works. They said this is going to be, again, another ISC where they talk about these new missions. Aside from that, we're getting, again, the new looting AI, a shopping app, which hopefully will allow us to locate and find things more easily across the verse and be able to buy them, maybe remotely. I don't know. No details on this. Looking forward to seeing more about what this is. And then a really big one, an update to the economy. Now what this means for players was a little bit unclear initially, but it does seem like this for us is going to mean changes to prices. Stuff like missiles are going to become more expensive, as they should be right now, they're less expensive than buying clothing, which makes no sense. But importantly, ships and FPS weapons and FPS armor are all going to get a lot more expensive in most cases. So for ships like the Pisces, apparently it's going to drop in price to around half of where it is now, to around 500,000 UEC, but ships like the Constellation are going to go up to 10 million UEC, and the Arrow to 2 million UEC. They also gave off a list of a couple other ships that players are probably really looking forward to buying. Stuff like the Hammerhead is now going to go up to 45 million, and the 890 Jump is going to be a whopping 70 million UEC. Now, this is where I think some people are going to be rubbed the wrong way, and I understand why. Making the prices higher for really desirable ships is clearly going to drive more players to purchasing ships on the website. This is great for CIG's funding, but maybe not necessarily for consumers. However, from another perspective, and I'm not saying that this is a good thing in general, I think that all these ships should be attainable, it does make a lot of sense that some ships should become more expensive. From what they said, they wanted to change the price of ships based on the material quality, the manufacture, size, and its functionality. So origin ships, for example, are luxury ships made of high quality materials and are just generally more expensive due to the name, and so their prices are going to be a lot higher than, say, ships like Drake. This doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, though. The changes to the economy are something that should affect the way that we make money in the game as well. So whether or not this makes a big difference for how long it takes you to earn a ship is yet to be seen, but I expect that some higher end ships, more late game ships, are going to require a lot more time and effort in order to get, and maybe that's what they should be. The only problem is that you can buy it on the website. So this is uh, something that I'm sure is going to be hotly debated down below and in Inspectrum and in a bunch of other places around the community. For right now, I'm gonna leave it right here because I don't wanna to get too much into this issue in this video because it could clearly fill up an entire video on its own. But that's all that they talked about for this initial 3.23 release. Although Jared said that there's actually a lot of features that they still haven't talked about that we can expect to see more information on moving towards the final release of 3.23 in quarter one. The one thing that I truly hope from all of this though is that this patch is an indicator of what we can expect to see from CIG moving forward with Star Citizen. Their shifting resources from Squadron back to Star Citizen could be a huge boon for the game's development and pace of progress. So if we continue down this road, we might actually see Star Citizen become a dailyable game by the end of 2024, certainly with the release of a new star system and functioning server meshing. But I want to know what you guys think down below. Do you think that this is an indicator of the ramping up? Are we finally seeing the fruits of switching from Squadron to Star Citizen? Or 
do we still have a lot more yet to come, a lot more ramping up yet to expect? Certainly we need to start seeing like three star systems per quarter if we want to see 100 star systems in 10 years. So definitely there's a lot more pace to pick up, but I still think that if this is the indication for 2024, well, it's going to be the best year yet for the game.